So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's Motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another instalment of Silent Night in Pieces, where we take beloved classic remake Silent Night from 2012. We break it up for Podcast Under the Stairs listeners into five-minute reviewable segments. I get podcasters from around the globe to join me. We sit down, we review, we go deep, we go in-depth. Some would argue more in-depth than a movie like this deserves. I say, um, wait to get to the end of the episode and then you make a judgement on that. On this episode, we're reviewing minute 65 through 70. This will open with uh, Santa Claus impaling poor Tiffany on a set of antlers. It will close out with the sheriff walking one Mr. Jim Epstein down towards the cells saying, uh, uh, Christmas 03, remember where you were? Um, joining me on this episode is The Phenom. That's right, we're going there. He is The Undertaker. Um, he is The Phenom of the podcasting world. He is one Mr. Doug Tilly. How's it going, Doug? So good, Duncan. Keeping my streak alive here. <laughs> I love it, yeah. <laughs> you are actually keeping the... This is the streak. This is the new streak. Um, until until one senile old man just decides to take it away from you for no reason at all. No payoff. Uh, but that's a podcast. <laughs> For a different time. Um, we, we briefly discussed on the previous episode, and this one is going to be shorter because time constraints I've put on us. Um, <laughs> like, talk ha- faster, yeah. Duncan. <laughs> do, do you have a favourite Christmas horror movie? Oh, my goodness. I mean, you know what? Yeah. The funny thing is that it is almost certainly Christmas Evil, which yes. I think has really become a beloved cult movie over the last, like, 15, 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, really has found its audience. But I have to say, when I first saw that movie on VHS, I thought it was fucking garbage. I was like, <laughs> what? Like, where, what's going on? What's? And I was such a dull, awful, awful kid. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I watch it now, and I'm like, this is so much better than the other movies trying to do the same thing <laughs> of that same time period. Awesome. Well, with that revelation, now that we know your favorite, uh, let's talk about your close second favourite, which uh-huh. is Silent Night from 2012. Um, so yeah, so this opens with um, essentially a scene paying homage <laughs> to the original, finally, because there's so little of this movie resembles <laughs> the, the movie that it is remaking. Uh, but we do get the antler death, so this is kind of this is kind of cool. Um, Santa lifts Tiffany and impales her slowly on a set of antlers. For all this movie does make a lot of mistakes in the cinematography, the editing, the script, um, camera work, <laughs> some of the performances, um, it, it does deliver on the death. Um, I like the deaths in this one. I also like their adherence mostly to practical effects. 
And this is yeah. a cool kill. It looks sore and they take their time with it. That's that mean spiritedness that we mentioned on your other episode. That we really labour this point. In the original movie, they go up the antlers pretty quick. This one, you kind of feel every second of it. So it's a cool death. Um, it's just a shame. It is a cool death, but it does get super overshadowed by what happens just like a minute later. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the character that I've referred to as not quite Jay from Jay and Silent Bob, because um, <laughs> that's who he is. The one that stole from his granddad earlier on, and just in general as a terrible actor with horrible dialogue, uh, he comes out... Why did, his, why did his granddad have so much money in his wallet if he was catatonic? We have literally asked this question on this show. <laughs> like... <laughs> We've also asked this question, why did Pennywise the clown take over his body? Because the voice that comes at him is two seconds away from going, girly boy, girly boy. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> also, like the actor that plays his granddad is clearly a lot younger and they've just spray painted his hair grey and drawn some grey lines on the side of his face like a pantomime and put him out there as an old man. Play old man. Um... Uh, you know, I'm a th- I'm a 35 year old actor here here to play the role of old man. Yes, we're gonna get him in the makeup. Um, Jay comes out and he's like, "Oh no, Tiffany!" And then <laughs> <laughs> Santa's oh, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> "Oh no, what's happened here?" Now, now she's never gonna finish what she was doing to me before. Um, and then Santa comes out and just slams an axe right in his spine. It's, it's kind of great. And then we're like, oh, please tell me that's not the end of this. And it's not, because he pulls the axe out, G falls over, and an a, a unconscionable amount of blood comes out his mouth. Um, <laughs> like just a, an, an amount that doesn't make any medical sense. But Santa stands over him and just swings that axe right into his head. And you know what? Not quite G. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> He's gone. He's it looks, here. I got to say, it looks fucking great. It's it brilliant. really looks good. It is, it is, for me, the highlight of the entire movie. I was so glad to be able... I'm not talking about it. There's no, We don't have any time for one thing. But also, there's not much to say. This guy's head, it's cleft in twain. Yes. And it is beautiful. Yeah. And like they, they, do, they do this justice. They, they cut the budget in some places, but gave us it where we wanted it. Um, I love the Santa's walking out. <laughs> Malcolm McDowell's accent. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah. We could have just maybe sent Malcolm McDowell to, like, I don't know, a, a, like some sort of vocal coach we could have sent him there but no we we instead gave us the the head split and i will take the head oh split. shit you know i mentioned on the other episode that he's doing that newfoundland sitcom i've never watched an episode but now i gotta imagine what him doing a newfoundland accent oh god like, like yeah this you, i have to see <laughs> like, i expect a full report um well, let's see if we find clips share some clips if you find them um santa goes upstairs after basically massacring the entire family of this little girl um except mrs claus mrs claus has survived and um, the mayor's daughter is there and he looks at the cookies, doesn't eat any of the cookies, hands her a bloody candy cane from his sack and on the way out the Excuse girl me? says, Santa, <laughs> you forgot the cookies. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, just sorry, I know I'm, I'm, I'm getting caught up on things. They were in the guest house yes. is where he murdered those. So <laughs> yeah. he left the guest house and went back into the regular house just to maybe, have this moment maybe with it the, killed the mother that we don't see on screen i have no idea oh silent night unedited version coming soon <laughs> we'll be, we'll just like a, <laughs> the director's cut um <laughs> you gotta think that not much was cut from this movie because like pretty much didn't have the budget to shoot extra um <laughs> or do like multiple takes um meanwhile at the parade the sheriff and the deputy are walking down the main street the sheriff espousing his wisdom he's a wolf in sheep's clothing hiding in plain sight <laughs> come here my dear um, and deputy's like I'll call Brenda get a fecal description and a license plate for Jim Epstein and he's like no he's Santa Claus remember the parade is a perfect cover nah <laughs> he'll be on foot <laughs> Just, just to remind listeners, Jim I've seen that's the Donald Logue character. They're looking for him. Yeah, okay. Dress like Santa. Uh, yeah. The deputy's like, is there any way we can call off the parade? A bit late now. Um, <laughs> fucking late. Yeah, fucking stop. Her father wanders by at the end of the parade in like 30 seconds. <laughs> like, like fully waving at the crowd. Uh, the sheriff's like, I've spoke to the mayor. I told him I had the situation under control. Listen, this freak can't hide forever. Sooner or later, they all make mistakes. <laughs> So the parade is going. This is a parade with no theme. 
Like and a distinct lack of Santas for it being a Santa con, right? Like it only... does have it does have one thing though, though Duncan. What is that? American have? flag all over the place. Just to remind America. us that this is an American town in America town. Yeah, this so, is. So I mean, <laughs> this is Cryer, Wyoming, which I don't even know if it is a place, but in this movie it is. By God, it's American. Um, the, there's a group of Santas walking down. One of them's walking against the grain, and he's elbowing and bashing as he walks through. Um, as he's getting to the other side, then he turns around and says, "Fake ass Santas <laughs> from me, fake ass Santa." And the deputy's like, "Shit, are you seeing this? It's Epstein! Shit, he's making a run for it!" Uh, and then we get a quite comical run by by Epstein here. It is very much like high knees and flailing arms um, as he just starts to run through the parade, and the deputy's chasing. And you know what? She's not caught up for this. She stops. She takes a breather, she's looking around, she's lost him, and then she looks up, and you know who's sitting upon her throne? Her dad. Her dad, dressed like Santa. <laughs> yeah, you know, an actual good cop. Um, uh, I mean, not that there is such a thing. My favorite part is when she pulls out her gun, you know, in this crowd of fucking people. Oh, yes. And one, and one, of, the crowd, one of the people in the crowd go, is that a gun? <laughs> yeah. But that should be the least surprising thing in an American <laughs> Main Street. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> she should be like, I like. She should be looking at her gun and saying, "What model is that? It's a cute gun." Um, but yeah, like she, our dad points in the direction. She takes off after him. We got a scene of them running down. The sheriff, who's out of breath but got ahead of the situation, is hiding behind the wall, out with a nightstick, smacks Epstein on the back. Um, he goes down. And then the sheriff finally gets his line. He says, you nasty, sadistic little prick. See, I told you I'd get him. Cuff him. And I'm like, yeah. Why, why, why was the sheriff out of breath? Like I he hadn't. No idea. I mean, I, theoretically, he was supposed to be running and searching for the Santa as well. But of course, they're not going to get Malcolm McDowell. <laughs> like, like the, the mental exhaustion <laughs> of trying to keep an American accent. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. He's, he's so tired. The, I, I think that the, the movie's trying to get you believe he somehow ran ahead of everything which doesn't make a lick of sense but he's i mean there. it doesn't make sense that that the santa claus would run as opposed to just stopping and being like oh there's a hundred santa claus yeah, it's look, very look very easy for, like, <laughs> like, look, at, look at me being all arnold schwarzenegger and predator with the mud you can't see me now um <laughs> like you're just gonna have to shoot all of us one at a time um oh. so, so uh yeah so like Jim Epstein, our like our red herring number two, has been arrested, and then we cut to the sheriff station, and uh, the, the sheriff is basically saying, "Get him over here, cast your mind back." Christmas, oh three, remember where you were, uh... and that's where, that's where we cut out. We cut out before um, Epstein's absolutely incredible monologue, which shits from a great height all over any other anti-Christmas monologue in this movie. It is so great. Uh, so we, we, we slightly miss that. I, I mean, I, I feel like this is academic. Favourite bit in this five minutes here, Doug Tilly? I mean, look, I feel in my heart like I should just put the the killing on the antlers, but yeah. I gotta go with the head split. I mean, that, is, that is some primo... That's the kind of shit when, as a teenager, if I saw this, I'm like, ah, you know what? The movie's not doing it for me, but you know, there's this part that yeah. I really enjoy. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite bit by a country mile. It's like mm -hmm. it's a bit divided in after a nod to the original movie that like is so much better. <laughs> like, it's like he gets an axe to the head, and he's the a funny thing. Kid. The funny thing, Duncan, is that if, if my clip went just a second longer, Donald Logue describes the town he calls it a herpes-ridden <laughs> crotch of a town, and that might have actually hit it if it was just <laughs> one second longer. <laughs> he's, he's so good in this movie. He's a, he's like he's a, he's too good for this movie. He's too good. Yeah. He, he he's so good that it's actually confusing why he's in here to be a red herring that doesn't even like. Yeah. You don't think for a fucking second that, that he could be the actual killer? Yeah, and like he he doesn't like even if you were thinking to yourself, oh, when he gets his fight with. Santa Claus, the killer, later on, it's going to be close. Not even close. <laughs> like he, he, he dies. He dies pretty savagely and pretty quick. Um, like he just starts insulting the guy who helps him. Out. <laughs> I just immediately he's like, <laughs> "Well, that's for someone else." Yep, that is that is for someone else. I can't remember who got that. That might be another double Duncan, and I did not stack the deck. Honest. If you're listening to this, Lacey, I didn't stack the deck. Uh, Doug Tilly, you're a busy guy. You do podcasts and stuff. Where can people check out your shows? 
Uh, you can check me out over at cinemasmogasport.com. New episodes every Monday and over on nobudgetpodcast.com for my podcast, No Budget Nightmares, all about micro budget and shot on video cinema. Outstanding. And you know what? I gave you a hard out and you, sir, just delivered right on that hard out of that recording. That's what you call a motherfucking professional, ladies and gents. What a can I say? Professional. Uh, we are doing Maniac Cop next in January. Are you interested? Oh, oh yeah, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need. That's all I need to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, we are doing episodes for the entire month. Um, the first through to the 24th before we officially take some time off. So every single day. When I said entire month, the entire month up until Christmas. The entire month minus a week. Uh, we're, doing, we're doing episodes. So I know for a fact there's an episode dropping tomorrow. So until then, I'll speak to you next time.